Good morning, y'all. It's me. I hope things are going really well at your place. I've got doggies everywhere. And I'm getting ready to bake biscuits. And that might gross a lot of you out. But in my house, there's no dog-free zones. There just isn't. I've got doggies in here. And... You know, look at my chair. It's all to pieces. There's a doggy back here. There's actually a doggy in the bathroom behind the door. I noticed he was laying back there earlier. So anyway, I hope that uh, things are going well at your house. We're just busy, busy here. I've been working on, <clears throat> excuse me, putting the chicken wire around my fence, which ends up being a bigger, bigger job than I thought it would be. But, um, yeah, I'll have it done today. So, you can see my little roll of wire laying down there. That's how far I made it. Over here and around the gate and all that sort of thing. And look at my orchids, guys. They're about to bloom out. This one's beginning to show some age. This one has bloomed out to the point that, yeah, it's just almost done and the big one is still very very pretty don't pay attention to the dust on it and then this little guy i think it's the first time i've ever had them all blooming at the same time this is bayla's medicine bless his heart i had to take him to the vet last week because and that's bayla that one right there he was jared's dog but um he had a respiratory infection and that was odd, so he's on antibiotic. All right. <clears throat> biscuits. Someone had asked me to bake biscuits. And yes, this isn't, if you're on low carb, this isn't going to be um, a recipe that, <laughs> that you're going to want to have in, in, your, in your little recipe book. But even on low carb, um, I think I would still have to have a biscuit every now and then. They're very, very simple. I use self-rising flour, but I will give you just a quick um, recipe. And I've, I have used um, just plain flour in a pinch, but self-rising is so much, so much easier. And this is a half cup measure. Um, it's easier just if you've got a one cup measure. I think my one cup measure right now is outside in, uh, in my peat moss. <laughs> I need to I need to get for myself several um, nice metal measuring sets because they end up in strange places. So we're going to start out with two cups of self-rising flour and yeah I think you saw all that. I'm loving my new phone by the way girls, oh my goodness. Oh my goodness. Um, now this is a stick of butter. And a lot of the old-fashioned recipes will call for shortening. And um, and that's fine. I mean, if that's, if that's what you'd prefer using, it would be a half a cup. But for me, that's just easy. The measuring's already done because one stick equals a half a cup. And I've had this little tool for a gazillion years, this little biscuit cutter. If you don't have one, you'll, you can use, you know, potato masher you can use. If you have just a, a pastry blender, we're just going to cut this, this dough or this, um, what is this? This butter. I haven't had enough coffee this morning yet, apparently. Oh, I better go over here and turn my oven on. I love this little countertop oven. And since we, since we got that a couple of years ago, I almost never use my big oven. <clears throat> I don't know if it makes a difference um, as far as the electric bill goes. I know that it doesn't seem to heat the kitchen up as much during the summer. But let me point something out real quickly, if any of y'all are in the market for one. I love this one. Everything except for the way the doors open. Um, the doors have, sometimes they don't latch correctly when I have them open. <clears throat> and you have to be really aware that they will, 
and pop closed right on your arm. And that's just not a fun thing. So I have to be really, really careful putting things in and out of it. I'd rather have one that just opens sideways like a um, microwave or one that lets down like a regular oven door. But anyway, that's one of those things you don't know until you've, until you've done it. So... When you get it all cut in there, it should look like cornmeal, kind of. If you leave the hunks too big, your butter too big, then you're going to have where it's just going to melt and run on your pan. And I've done that. It doesn't matter. It just kind of creates a nice crust on the bottom of your biscuits. <laughs> I like crusty biscuits. All right. Now going to make a little well just in the middle and as, as far as the amount of liquid that's sometimes it just really just depends on the day I just do it by eyeball I just eyeball it but in order to actually make this into a recipe you can follow I put one cup of buttermilk and of course buttermilk is also something either people love it or they hate it we love buttermilk biscuits so I use buttermilk and I went up to the one cup mark so that I can measure a little bit. It's not going to take a whole cup, but I'll measure and then um, add some if I need to. And I think it really just, it depends on your flour. It depends on, you know, how humid it is that day. It just depends on a lot of things. So you kind of have to just play with it and learn to eyeball it. One thing I do try is not to add too much to begin with because if you make them, if you add too much liquid and you have to add more flour, uh, that, that kind of seems to make them tough to me. I don't know. Uh, Y'all may have more, more luck with that than I have, but I would rather have to add a little bit more liquid than more flour. So I kind of go a little slow on that to begin with. And believe it or not, see it's gotten pretty much all the dry flour. And that's all, you, you just want it to pick up all the dry. And when it has all the dry incorporated into your, your biscuit dough, you're done, you're done. So let me see, how much does that measure out to be? Um, that measured out to be about three quarters of a cup. So it's pretty close. All right. Now I'm just going to use my countertop. And if you want it less messy, you can actually, you know, put down a piece of parchment paper. I remember my mother had one of those great big, huge plastic. Um, it's like for making um, pie crusts, and I can't remember where it was from, but I hated washing that thing. <laughs> so, no, if I'm gonna if I'm gonna have to wipe it anyway, I'll just wipe the countertop. So, right. oops, that might have rang your bell. I'm sorry, and I don't need it a whole lot, but I do need it just a little bit. And you can either get your rolling pin out here, or you can just mash them down with your hands. And that's what I prefer to do. The weather is absolutely phenomenal here. I'm anxious to get outside today and go, well, go work on my fence. Unfortunately, that's the outside job making more soil blocks but uh, at least it will be outside and that will be nice okay I'm just going to fold this one over and make another biscuit out of that one sometimes 
two cups of flour will net me, well, it will net me anywhere between 10 and 12 biscuits, depending on how, how thick I mash my, my dough down. And each consecutive time that I mash the dough down, I do try to make, uh, leave it just a little bit thicker because I think that it, you know, kneading it will cause it not to rise quite so high. And honestly, I usually put that last wonky one on there just to rise like that. All right. That's telling me that our temperature is up. All right, it caught. I'm gonna put them down on the second shelf because I do like the biscuits to be just a little bit crusty on the bottom and it helps with that. All right. And this is where Hugh will usually say, save me that flour because I'm gonna make gravy. <laughs> we all love sausage gravy in this household, so. I will save him the flour in a little bowl usually if we're doing that, but I'm not doing that today. Oops, sorry, bye-bye. I'm gonna toss that little bit away. All right. And usually, let me see, that is, gonna give me 22 minutes in the oven, and I'll just leave that running. And we'll go in here and look at my kerfuffle with the plants. I'll come back and clean that up in a minute. Leave the puppies all over the floor. All right. It had been a couple of years since I had used the soil blocks. And I should have really, really refreshed my memory by listening to all of Lisa Mason Ziegler, all of her YouTube videos on using the soil blocks. <clears throat> what I did was, um, you saw that I did the peas. Well, the peas, unfortunately, I set them directly on the heat mat. And so they, they germinated, many of them did, but then they died because the soil got too warm. And then I had grown a couple of trays of flowers, but if I had listened to her and reminded myself, a lot of the flowers, the, the seed for the the um, cut flowers are so tiny that they will actually say plant on the surface and so I should not have covered them over because they need sunlight and they need um, oxygen to germinate and that's something that I think most of us in our seed starting um, foibles that that's usually the thing that we might do wrong is either not keep them moist enough or overwater them. That's not a good thing either. Um, so I'm going to encourage y'all to watch Lisa Mason Ziegler. Watch it's called the Gardener's Workshop, and she has YouTube videos. Just she has a whole series that's called Soil Blocking Saturdays, and you can learn so so much from her. Um, if you're wanting to use this technique, to do this technique, she's she's your go-to. She's my go-to. So uh, I could have saved myself a lot of trouble if I just re <laughs> refreshed my memory before I started on all this the other day. So today, I'm going to be soil blocking again. Now, now the cabbages did germinate, and every single little cell had a cabbage in it. Um, unfortunately... We had company yesterday, and I was busy all day doing this, that, and the other, and I forgot to give them a little drink. You can't do that with soil blocks, especially the tiny ones. Um, so when I came in here this morning, and I thought, oh, no, I didn't, so I didn't wet them. I hope they're okay, and I pulled back my burlap, my burlap. Um, the cabbages were yellow, and I thought I'm not even, you know, they might have been okay if I went ahead and given them a little water. Um, but they they looked like they were already struggling. So I thought, no, I've, I've done everything, so many things wrong right at this beginning. I'm going to just refresh my own memory by watching Lisa's um, videos on soil blocking and then start fresh. 
So today I'm going to be doing a lot of soil blocking. A lot of soil blocking. Now, let's go in here because this is this is kind of the heartbreak. It's not a heartbreak. It's not a heartbreak, y'all. It's um it's a learning curve. All right. I've continued to practice trying to get things in my mind for our little uh, videos. Now, I've got to tell you, at first I was thinking, oh no, I have forgotten everything I've ever known about painting. And then I started noticing that there was something absolutely specific happening. And what it is, is that my paint is not blending. Let me give you an up close. You see how, how grainy this is? That's not typical to my way of painting. It just, that isn't. That's not what it does. And it finally occurred to me that the consistency of my paint is dry. And now I have, I have never painted with um, a medium in my paints. I've always just used straight paint and um, that's just, it always worked for me. And so it occurred to me that what's happened is that my paint has gotten old. My paint is just too dry to move the paint around on the canvas like I should be able to. So I'm either going to have to get some medium and practice using the medium with my paint or I'm going to have to replace my paint and that's what I want to do. I don't want to have to learn to use something brand new <clears throat> with the oil with a medium. I would rather um I would rather just replace my paint. So um over the course of the next month or so, I'll be purchasing my paint. I'm going to have Hugh build me lots more canvases. And those of you that have been waiting on me to get another video out, I apologize. Guys, I apologize. Um, and But I know from the comments that y'all have given that you're so patient and so loving. Um, and I need you to continue being patient and loving because I've decided that there are so many um, learning curves in this whole thing for me. I wasn't expecting it to be quite this hard, quite this challenging, several things. I wasn't expecting my painting memory to be so far gone. <laughs> um, and it is, it is, I'll just admit that. Um, so I'm going to have to absolutely remind myself of how to do multiple, multiple techniques and I wasn't expecting the YouTube videos to be quite so challenging, even though enjoyable. I have to tell you that I'm absolutely loving them and especially our walks together, but I am finding them challenging to find the, the time in the day when I can um, just concentrate on that and, and get it ready to, to go on YouTube. So all of that said to say, the painting videos are absolutely going to happen. That is my determination, but they're not going to happen till fall of the year. I need to spend the summer just when, when I can, in the evenings, when I'm finished outside for the day, I can just sit down and just play with my paints uh, as soon as I refresh my paint supply. And I can be ready this fall with hopefully multiple videos already created and all ready to go on the air so that there will be just a, a consecutive series of different paintings um, that will be finished and ready to go. And y'all won't have to be sitting there wondering, well, is she going to get another video out this week? Or is she going to get another video? I just saw one of my ducks fly by. <laughs> but, um, it, this is this is such a huge learning curve, and I didn't realize, um, you know, Aaron had mentioned before that, you know, the, the YouTube videos are actually time-consuming and quite a challenge. Um, 
I didn't, I thought, yeah, well, how, how hard could they be? <laughs> well, now I know. But uh, anyway, I'm, I'm sorry, those of you that have already bought your paint, um, can I encourage you just to really be playing with them this summer? Um, be just, just messing around with them and, and trying a few techniques, getting familiar with your paint, getting familiar with your brushes. And I still may, I'm, I'm, this isn't anything set in stone, but I, I'm still going to videotape um, as I'm working on a different technique. And if something, it, it probably won't be a specific painting that I'm working on, but just a technique of working on clouds maybe, or working on, um, you know, whatever, whatever I might be working on. Um, and if it, if it looks like it's going to be something that would be beneficial to share with y'all, um, I'll stick that up every now and then. And maybe, maybe we can just do some, just little practice videos together before we actually start this painting again. Um, we'll be doing this painting from scratch, but it will start next fall. And hopefully, like I said, I'll have at least three paintings ready to roll. And each painting may take, you know, three or four weeks to finish. I'd like to be able to finish a painting every month. Um, so we, we may have three paintings and so therefore three months worth of painting videos so that there won't be such lulls and lags in between. All right, and um, I just wanted to give you a heads up on that. Again, uh, I know some of you are gonna fuss at me for apologizing, um, but I have to apologize here because I, I thought that it was going to um, be much more simple than, um, than it actually turned out to be. But it's gonna happen. I'm I'm not I'm not backing down from that. It's going to happen. I this is a challenge to me <laughs> now at this point. It's going to happen. So um, anyway, let's shoot for um, I'm going to say mid October or early November. I'll be able to tell you all uh, as we go through the summer um, how it's progressing, and um, I would like for everybody just to be kind of. Um, settled in for for the fall and the winter so that when we get started we can just we can just really enjoy working together and communicating um, and now for the the Facebook video uh, or the Facebook page I think that I'm gonna have to take the one up that's up now uh, I did get in touch with my computer guy and I talked with his assistant I still have not heard back so I don't know if it's something that he's gonna be able to help me with anyway and uh, Chelsea suggested, Mom, maybe we need to just take that one down and just put up a new one that's specifically a group YouTube um, or a group Facebook channel. So that's going to happen too within the next couple of weeks. Um, I will give a little notice at the top of the YouTube chain uh, or the Facebook, all these words, all these different terms. Um, the top of the Facebook page, I'll, I'll make a notation <clears throat> of when the old one's going down and the new one's going up. And so then we can actually start communicating with, with each other much, much easier. And um, that's going to be fun. I, I have so gotten, I have so enjoyed getting to know so many of you through um, your comments. And uh, it, it's just going to be, it's going to be a good time. It's going to be encouraging for all of us. And I tell you, I couldn't have made it even this far with this channel if y'all hadn't have been so encouraging. And um, I appreciate it. You just don't know how much I appreciate it. This is this has gotten me out of a, a just a a hole that I was still trying to dig myself out of. Um, I'd come a long way. I think that I had reached a point where I was ready to uh, just meet life again and just enjoy. Um, enjoy what life has to offer at this point but uh, this YouTube channel has really just kind of sped all that up for me and um, I'm I'm just having a ball and so <clears throat> of course that great old big garden down there just waiting waiting on veggies and and flowers I can't wait and y'all 
can see the, um, the African violets we started a while back. They're all doing well. And then the ones over here in their little trays, they're struggling a little bit more, but I should have started them actually in just regular plugs instead of these um, egg cartons simply because the, I have to water them from the top and I never like to water from the top. If I'd started them in the little black plugs, which I have plenty, <clears throat> and I don't know why I didn't do that, then they would have been much further along, I think, and they wouldn't look quite so weird. But anyway, so now you know all the strange things going on <laughs> in my life. Let's go back in here and see how much time is left on these these biscuits. Every time I pass a window, I get distracted with all my feathery ones. Bunch of weirdos. All right. They're coming along. And they have about eight minutes left. And you know what's cool? Do you see the timer? And it's just kind of wiggling a little bit. On Aaron's GoPro, when um, when it's hitting a light of any kind, it makes the light look like it's flickering. And I know some of y'all have been kind of concerned that there was a, electrical problems happening in the house, um, but it's not. It has something to do with with the light. I need to go get my coffee. It's still a coffee time of day for me. Oh, and let me tell. <laughs> Let me tell you this very strange thing that I'm doing. All right, sit down in this old chair. This chair is the ancient of days. And you see all the vinyl is peeling off of it, partly from the dogs and whatever else. So I keep this quilt over the back of it. <clears throat> all right, now, <clears throat> you know, I, I told y'all that when I struggle, when I struggle with eating after supper is when I stay up too late. I also need to be outside first thing in the morning as soon as it's daylight because um, I have a couple different, I have two different thyroid conditions <clears throat> and I'm very, very sensitive to heat. So to work, for me to work outside, I need to be out when it's especially if I have a lot to do and do my field work as soon as it's daylight basically and I can work until about 10 or 11 o'clock and then I need to come in. That's hard to do <clears throat> when you're not going to bed until 11, 12, 1 o'clock. Um, I've been trying to get my housework done you know late in the evening after everybody's gone to bed because I cannot. It, it's just it bugs me to go outside and get started if I have sink full of dishes or if I have laundry that needs to be folded or if my, and my floors always need to be swept. You can imagine with all these doggies, it's just crazy. And then with the boys coming in and well in me too, with mud on our boots, cause you don't want to stop at the door every time you need to go in and run, you know, run to the restroom or <clears throat> get a drink of water or whatever. So um, it's been so muddy here that I don't, ask people to do that. I don't do that myself. So the floors need cleaned a lot. <laughs> so, um, it occurred to me the other night that instead of going to bed really late and trying to get up early and then maybe having a, a, a nap in the middle of the afternoon, what if I went to bed really early and got up really, really early and got my housework done that those hours in the morning before daylight and then go out. And I know that that's probably something that, you know, generations past did easily. It just seems so odd to us now. Um, and so this week I, I made that, I made that jump. I started going to bed at eight o'clock and getting up. Actually, I had my alarm set for four, but I've been waking up closer to three because my body's not used to ever sleeping more than seven hours. And I get up and I clean. Hey, Bodie. Say hi, bud. Say hi. It's a dull dude. Um, 
but uh, I get up and um, get my floors cleaned and get my laundry done and get my kitchen cleaned um, do my bed my bread baking um, any of those types of things that typically I was doing later in the day um, or trying to do late in the evening I just and then I can go outside with a free con conscious free conscience and start out there and just actually enjoy it because I don't have in this nagging you know oh brother when I go back inside I've got you know this mess or that mess or the other mess to clean up it has been a joy it has been a joy it's something that I wouldn't have thought that I would actually enjoy getting up that early but I'm loving it and after I eat supper in the evening trying to eat a little bit earlier though because going to bed with a full time is no fun either but uh, I'm not eating after supper now <laughs> I don't have time to <laughs> So, yay, I think I think I have found a solution to that dilemma anyway. And um, so this afternoon, probably after, maybe right after supper, I think I'll be taking a walk because it's supposed to be gorgeous here today. And for the rest of the week, I think we're supposed to even get up close to 80 one of the days, maybe Thursday. But the weather is just absolutely phenomenal so I am very very excited to get outside and spend some time walking now throwing all this information out I asked Aaron this morning if he could help me do a live tomorrow evening and he said yes he can so tomorrow evening at seven o'clock this will be Thursday um, the 20 I'll have to look on my my calendar and see um, let's just go ahead and go do that so I can be sure and give you the right date um, this will be Thursday the 23rd yeah Thursday the 23rd we will be doing our first live together and it will be at uh, 7 o'clock and so maybe just giving you all the information that I've just given you, you might have some questions. And um, usually it's, it's my experience that if someone has questions, someone else has the same questions. So we can just work through them together. But uh, you all are phenomenal. Um, I do love you. And I am very, very thankful for each one of you and for your interest in this, in this, vid, um, what, this YouTube channel. And uh, I, I'm just encouraged. And I hope that you also are encouraged. And I hope that just the little um, delay with the, the painting videos will not be discouraging. Um, because it's, it's, I'm not discouraged about that other than just, you know, hoping that I'm not disappointing a lot of you. But I, I think that, um, I think they're going to be so much fun when I actually do get them started uh, in a way that that can be you know on a timely basis and so yay let me see if I need to turn the biscuits around they are beginning to brown let's open it up and you can see usually on this little oven those in the very back get browned sooner than the ones in the front so I do typically end up having to turn them around Let's see if I can get this little oven door to lock open. And Mika's in her spot. She loves that spot. So, and what I do is typically pull this rack out. Oops. Now, nah, I'm not going to get it to turn. That's all right. Not without setting down my, ah, it's right now finished anyway. All right, I'm going to have to set y'all down. So I get these guys out. And this uh, tripod, I shake all over the place when I'm trying to open it. There must be a trick to it, but I don't know <laughs> what the trick is. All right, biscuits, let's get you out of there.
All right. They're, they're as brown as Aaron and Chelsea like them. Hugh and I tend to like them a little bit more brown. Um, Hugh actually likes them almost burned. Let me set this down. All right. As a matter of fact, Hugh likes everything burned. I don't know if y'all uh, know anybody like that, <laughs> but he likes um, like hot dogs on the grill. He likes them pretty much burned. Um, at one at one point, I told him, I said, "Honey, if you were a super villain, your your name would be Carcinogen." <laughs> And that's the truth. That is the truth. And there comes Aiden Connor. Would you like a biscuit? Um, sure. <laughs> so that's what they look like inside. Can you really grab some agua? I'll put this boy a little bit of butter on there. Oops, if I can hold on to it. So yeah, I'll always be making a mess. Huh? I said you always be making a mess. I am always making a mess. Always. Say hi to my people. Hello. <laughs> it's hot. It's real hot outside right now. Is it hot outside? Oh my lord. All right, y'all. I will see you hopefully tomorrow night. And you should smell these biscuits. I wish you were here so that I could share one with all of you. All right. Love you much. And see you later.